Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we've got part two of the series looking at field effect transistors. It's definitely worth seeing part one if you haven't already done that. I'll put a link up there to part one which looks at the junction field effect transistor as well as being a little bit of a, a general introduction to what FETs actually are. This video focuses specifically on the MOSFET or metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So let's kick off by having a look at uh, what a MOSFET actually is and how it's put together. There's two distinct types of field effect transistor. As we saw in the previous video, the junction FAT which has the symbol thus and the MOSFET or metal oxide semiconductor uh, FAT uh, which has that symbol. Um, both versions of FAT can come in enhancement and depletion mode um, and as with JFETs it's an electric field that controls operation in a MOSFET as opposed to the charge carriers. There's two distinct types, enhancement and depletion mode and N-channel enhancement mode MOSFETs are the most common but uh, P-channel and uh, enhancement, sorry, and depletion mode uh, do also exist. However, in this uh, video we're going to focus on the N-channel enhancement mode. Looking at the architecture then, just a little bit of revision. Uh, you may recall from previous video the structure of a, a junction field effect transistor where there are two pieces of um, P-type material set into the N-type substrate and the two gate connections are actually connected to the P-type material. That's the JFET. Um, a MOSFET, uh, a little bit different, we've still got the um, substrate, however note this time it's actually P-type and this is for an N-channel uh, MOSFET. Uh, inlaid into that are two N-channels and deposited on the surface of the substrate between them is the oxide insulating layer. It's usually um, silicon oxide as that's easy to create because we've got uh, silicon, is the, silicon is the substrate anyway. And then uh, overlaid on top of the insulator is uh, a metal uh, plate if you like um, which is deposited and that um, is actually the gate. So it's just worth pausing here for a moment and if you go from left to right you've got metal oxide and semiconductor. So the name comes from metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So that's the gate connection then which is um, connected to that plate but notice that the gate is completely insulated from the rest of the transistor unlike the JFET on a MOSFET the gate is insulated. The source is connected to the N channel and also to the P channel substrate and the, gain, the drain is connected to the, the other part of the N channel. So that's um, an enhancement mode MOSFET with the distinctive symbol there with the three bars on it. Uh, for reference a depletion mode is almost the same um, but there's a little bit of addition. If you look in between the two N channels on a depletion mode MOSFET there is actually uh, a, a thin end channel that actually connects the two end channels together. So that's a depletion mode MOSFET and the distinctively different symbol there. And perhaps the other thing to notice is that a depletion mode MOSFET, a little bit like a JFET, is a normally on device, whereas the enhancement mode MOSFET is a normally off device. OK, let's go and have a look at an enhancement mode MOSFET on the bench and do a bit of exploration. On the breadboard then is an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. It's the 2N7000. It's a fairly general purpose MOSFET. And I've got a, a current limiting resistor here uh, connected to the drain and then that goes up to the positive supply. I've also got um, an ammeter connected there so we can look at the drain current. I've got this potential uh, potentiometer working as a potential divider across the supply rail and uh, twiddling that potentiometer allows me to vary the gate voltage. So currently gate voltage is at zero and this is the uh, drain current and I've picked 
an analog meter because I just want to show you um, how rapidly the gain current actually rises once the transistor is actually uh, become conductive. So I've picked the uh, current limiting resistor here just to give us uh, full scale deflection on the meter. That's the only reason for that and obviously I don't want uh, the current to run away and damage the device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase the voltage on the gate. This is a positive voltage and I'm going to just bring it up here to about 1 volt. So that's about 1 volt and there's absolutely no movement whatsoever on the uh, drain current. Um, this FET is still most definitely switched off. So just an important point there, quite often with silicon devices you come across this 0.6 um, forward voltage threshold that doesn't apply to a MOSFET because the there isn't a connection between the gate and the actual rest of the transistor, it's purely being done by an electric field. So I'm going to just gently continue to introduce the, increase the voltage and although you probably can't see it terribly well, the needle is just beginning to move now at about 1.4 volts. So if I just go back to about 1.3 if I can do it, yeah, that's pretty much still off. But by 1.4, if I can get it there, it's just begin to move. So if I now go up to 1.5, yeah, you can definitely see movement on the needle now. By 1.8, it's very nearly full deflection, uh, the, the potentiometer is a little bit too um, imprecise for me to be able to show you something exactly there, but by 1.9 volts we are actually as far across as we're ever going to get. Um, if I continue up there to 3 volts, 4 volts, there isn't actually any change in the, in the drain current. Uh, that's because the resistor is, is limiting the current flow. So in other words, we're fully into the saturation region of the, of the FET. So if you... I'll just turn it back to off. Uh, earlier on I used a digital meter to measure the drain current and I increased the voltage on the gate by increments of 100 millivolts and I just wrote down what I was getting. Um, so just have a look at this graph from Excel and you can see here this is this actual transistor in this setup. You can actually see the very sudden rise from being switched off to being almost fully on and it's obviously easier to see it on a analog meter but that that change in current is incredibly quick. It occurs over less than you know, two or three hundred millivolts on the, the gate voltage. So, uh, very distinct change, and it's one of the reasons FETs uh, work so well as a switch. Okay, let's, um, let's now go back and have a look at what's actually going on inside that transistor. Okay, we saw then the quite dramatic effect of applying a positive voltage to the gate of an enhancement mode MOSFET. And effectively what we're doing there is charging up one plate of a capacitor, the other plate being the uh, substrate of the actual semiconductor device itself. Remember, that is of course insulated from, from the gate uh, electrode. So the effect on the opposite side then is to produce uh, a depletion region. And what goes on in that depletion region is complex and probably well beyond this video, but essentially the negative charge carriers, i.e. the electrons, tend to get ex uh, attracted towards the depletion region whilst the holes or the positive charge carriers tend to be um, repelled from that region and the net effect of that exchange of electrons and holes is to produce, if you like, uh, a channel which actually becomes conductive and uh, you hopefully saw there on the meter the effects of that. Uh, and just for completeness, I don't have a, a depletion mode device to show you on the bench, but a similar effect occurs in depletion mode when we apply a negative voltage to the gate, the depletion region actually pinches off the channel which is normally there in a, in a depletion mode MOSFET. And so you can see we've got the normally off, 
in the case of an enhancement, normally on in the case of a depletion, similar to a, to a JFET actually. Okay, we saw there, uh, and I mentioned that uh, a MOSFET is um, very effective as a switch, so let's now go back to the bench and have a look at that uh, switching effect and also one of the risks. And then we're going to go on to look at uh, how we can plot that curve in hopefully a more graphical way for you. Okay, one more little thing about FATs. Um, I've got another 2N7000 here, uh, again connected in the same way as previously. However, uh, I've got a current limiting resistor and I've got three white LEDs here. I've turned the exposure down so you can see the LEDs when they turn on. And I want to demonstrate to you how how sensitive an FET actually is. So all I'm, so this yellow wire here is uh, connected to the gate and the gate is just floating at the moment. So if I go somewhere near that wire, I provide enough charge on that gate for the FET to switch on. Yeah, if I actually touch the end of the wire, it's pretty much as bright as it'll get. That's fully on and it's almost fully on. If I squeeze tightly, it definitely is fully on. So yeah, I guess that's a form of touch switch. Um, which is a common application for an FET. But what I wanted to demonstrate to you was some FETs are quite sensitive to static electricity. And you've probably come across these static wristbands. I've got this connected to my uh, earth here in the, in the lab. And uh, they're just two or three pounds in the UK, very cheap. Um, and you put it on your wrist and it provides an earth connection. Um, I've took it off my wrist because I just want to show you uh, the effect of this. So what I'm going to do, if I can get it all to stay in one place, um, is I'm going to, okay, there's the effect of the static electricity in my body causing the gate current. If I now earth myself, as you can see, the FET doesn't switch on. So I'm going to hold the cable and loose the earth. There you go. So I'm now touching the earth. So hopefully that demonstrates to you that these um, cheap and cheerful static discharge wrist straps really do work. And if you have, if you are working with devices that are sensitive to static electricity, uh, these things can really help. And finally, let's see if we can actually view the characteristic curve of an FET. So here is yet another 2N7000. Same arrangement again, using a potentiometer to provide a variable gate uh, voltage from uh, zero up to up, up to positive supply rail if necessary. And uh, I've got a current limiting resistor and I've got a couple of PNP transistors here arranged as what's called a current mirror. And I claim no originality here, all credit to Alan Walk, W2AEW. He's got a, a video uh, on this, um, which is absolutely excellent. I'll put a link at the top of the screen there to that. I really would encourage you to look at that. This man really knows his stuff and I've learned so much of him. Um, but what I'm actually doing here, I'm feeding a, a ramp voltage at about 300 hertz into the, to the drain, uh, down to, to ground at the source. And I'm using those two transistors as what's called a, a current mirror. And I'm measuring voltage on one side and I'm effectively measuring current on the other. And I'm feeding those two signals into channels one and two of my oscilloscope. So let's just uh, have a look at that. On the, so I've got the scope set in XY mode and it's displaying, as you can see there, voltage uh, in the horizontal plane and current in the vertical plane. And currently I've got the FET turned off. So as I increase the gate voltage, you should hopefully see straight away some activity. Um, don't worry about all the the noise if I move away from there. So there you can see there is the FET turning on very rapidly which looks similar to the graph that we drew in Excel earlier when I did the measurements on the meter and then you can see it very rapidly goes over the knee into the, the saturation region and if I increase the gate voltage a little more again don't worry too much about the um, all the noise that's just but yeah, when I, so that's a higher gate voltage, and when I take the uh, adjuster away, it, it settles down. So that's um, quite a nice way of actually viewing the... Um, see if I can find a nice middle one for you. That's quite a nice way of viewing the actual characteristic curve of the 
um, FET itself uh, and displaying the graph in XY mode on the scope. So yeah, you can. Uh, the, those diagrams uh, often occur in um, data sheets, and uh, if I can just find one on here, there's absolutely loads of them, um, and you get all these various curves here for the transistor. And I think this is quite nice because we're actually seeing this curve um, in real life on the on the scope in XY mode. And if you've got a, a single channel scope that's got um, allows you to work in XY mode, you can still view this. You don't need a two channel scope to do that. Um, but I think that's a really nice demonstration of um, the performance curves of that. And as I say, I um, first saw this on Alan Walk's channel and would encourage you to watch that. That's, that's really excellent stuff. There we go. That's a characteristic curve of the 2N7000 field effect transistor. Well, that concludes our look at the MOSFET, the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Hopefully it's um, been useful and it's made some sense. I actually think the way that MOSFETs work um, is sort of easier to understand than the way the bipolar junction transistor works. I have done a video on that. I'll put a link up there. I'd encourage you to have a look at that. But I certainly think MOSFETs are uh, a sort of easier device to understand. And uh, you come across them all the time. We've all got technology that's absolutely absolutely stuffed full of MOSFETs. They probably form part of a, an integrated circuit, but they are nonetheless MOSFETs. If you've liked the video, please click the thumbs up. Um, it'd be great if you could subscribe if you haven't already. Let people know about the channel. Uh, thanks very much for your support and encouragement. Comments are always welcome, and we'll see you on the next one.